Hello, and thank you for joining us today for this webinar on State of Your Health, How New Laws May Impact You. My name is Mary Bartlett, and I'm a State Director of Advocacy and Access for the Arthritis Foundation. The Arthritis Foundation advocates have played a pivotal role in more than 100 state legislative victories across the country since 2014, including new laws on out-of-pocket costs in Washington, D.C. But what do these victories mean for patients and their access to care? The Arthritis Foundation has you covered as your go-to resource to learn more about the benefits of these new and improved changes in law. We're here to help ensure that your new protections are implemented fully and that patients in the district know their rights. This includes providing resources like this webinar that explain the issue, the new law, and what it means to patients. The purpose of this video is to learn more about the out-of-pocket cost law in Washington, D.C. that was fully implemented in January 2018 and what to do if you feel the law has been violated. We had amazing champions in Washington, D.C. on this bill. A huge thank you to each of those council members. First, let's define copayment limitation. Historically, pharmacy benefits have come up with fixed copays for different tiers of medication. Now some health insurance policies are moving vital medications into a fourth or higher specialty tier. Specialty tiers require people with arthritis and other conditions to pay a percentage, coinsurance, of their drug cost. Let's look at an example. The copayments might be set at $10, $20, and $50 for the three tiers. If your medication is moved into a higher specialty tier, you may be paying 25 to 50% of the drug cost rather than a fixed amount. What are your rights? This law imposes a limit on the amount that a person must pay in copayment or coinsurance through a health benefit plan for a specialty drug prescription. The copayment shall not exceed $150 per month for up to a 30-day supply of the drug, and a request may be made for a non-preferred drug to be covered under the same cost sharing as for preferred drugs if certain conditions apply. Who benefits from this new law? This law will decrease out-of-pocket cost to the patient and give the patient the right to request a non-preferred drug to be covered under the same cost sharing applicable to preferred drugs if the physician determines that the preferred drug would not be as effective or would have adverse side effects, or both. To learn if you are covered, contact your insurer and provide your policy number. What happens if your prescription cost is too high? If your medication is above the new cap of $150 for a 30-day supply or $300 for a 90-day supply, you may want to talk to your pharmacist and healthcare provider about alternatives that would be covered. You can also decide to pay out of pocket and compare discount cards, cash prices, and assistant programs to determine what works best for you. You can also begin the appeals process. Ask your pharmacist what they heard from your insurance company and write it down. Call your doctor and report the problem. See if they can suggest next steps to get your medication. Then call your insurance company and find out how to appeal the decision. Your physician often needs to intervene or write a letter. Then share copies of any insurance letters and information you receive with your doctor. Make sure you are on the same page. Here are some tips for working with your insurance company. First, check with your human resources office to learn the specific rules of your plan. Check to see what measures your physician has already taken with the insurance company. If nothing has worked, you may need to file an appeal with the insurance company. Call your insurance company to find out why your medication did not receive approval. This number can be found on the back of your insurance card. Finally, find out if your appeal needs to be done online or if there is another process from your insurer. It helps to keep notes of all the conversations you have who you speak with, dates and times of calls, as well as any case reference numbers. Having good records helps move future calls forward. Be sure to stay in touch with your doctor throughout the process and share any information you're given. Your insurance company must provide the reason in writing. Ask about that if you have not received anything. 
If you're submitting an appeal yourself, include all the relevant documents that may help your case. This includes letters of support from a physician, test results, and your personal narrative. But what do you do if your insurance company is still not compliant? What do you do if you feel your rights have been violated? On this slide, we've listed the website and phone number for the DC Department of Insurance Securities and Banking. But remember, before you can request an external review, you must have completed the internal review process provided by your insurance company and receive a final decision. If you have questions or need additional information, all of our resources will be available on the Arthritis Foundation's advocacy webpage. If you have additional coverage questions, we encourage you to visit Your Coverage and Care through Prescription for Access. This go-to resource will help you better understand health coverage options, determine how your current plan meets your arthritis care needs, and guide you through the claims denial process. The kit includes information, tips, and tools for consumers to get the most coverage and avoid or minimize claim denials. This kit includes step-by-step -step instructions, sample letters, and consumer assistance information to guide users through the appeals process. Additionally, the Arthritis Foundation's helpline provides people with arthritis, especially those most vulnerable, tailored solutions to inquiries about arthritis and its management. The phones are staffed by licensed clinical social workers who provide expert answers to questions about access to health care, information about resources to pay for medication, and community resources. Thank you for listening to today's webinar as we want to make sure that new state laws are being implemented fully so patients can enjoy their new protections.